Today I'm gonna to break down a few tracks where I had some strange uh, and unexpected successes with sampling. This is a track called Mind Palace. Partway through the track, this flute sample comes in. What I had to use from the beginning was this. The melody sort of evolved from just toying around with the sample, but if I had used a MIDI clip, I wouldn't have been able to stretch out some of the weird bits like that, those, those kind of note changes and stuff. A lot of this is just stretched out and then pitch shifted up and down. This is just a reverse portion of this except it's pitch shifted. And at the end, I've just got a, a max auto tune-up plugin. Without it, it's a little bit painful. But in context, it sounds all right. So this comes down to the first tip that I've found of when to sample. When you have a melody in mind that you want to come from a specific acoustic instrument, sometimes you can get there with synthesis. You could even use a multi-sampled instrument but sometimes there are those subtle nuances, the transitions between notes, that it's much better to be able to stretch and pull apart. I could get all the sort of strain from the flute player's throat. This track, Trump Memes, partway through this saxophone sample comes in. I could have plugged it into a multi-sampled saxophone, but it would have been harder to get sounds like that sound, and like that. There's just some interesting textural elements that come out of it. This sample took some time to work with. It was from some hip hop pack. It just repeats that. I thought it wasn't gonna work at all, but once it was covered up by the rest of the song, it sort of hid all of the uh, awfulness. <laughs> like that. And here it actually goes an octave down. So in this case, I was just using Ableton's stretching algorithm where the form immense are up at full, but the envelope is a little bit lower. Again, it sounds awful on its own, but when hidden, it gets the point across. Here's a track I released quite a while back. I was mindlessly hopping around freesound.org, found this free clip from some market, pitched it down two octaves, and then pitched it up at the very end. I'd call this the sort of crate digging approach where the song is defined by the sample and I guess this depends on what type of personality you are, but for me this this works like 20% of the time. So I actually opened this track to cover my second point, which is using samples as greebling. Greebling is a term commonly used in game development today that started out in the film industry when uh, prop developers would glue random objects to props to make them look more complicated. By the lead concept artist from Naughty Dog, who's worked with Best Seta Game, he talks about all the cheats that concept artists use to be able to crank out a piece of artwork. And there are a lot of situations where concept artists will use existing material or textural things just to lay over and make something look more complicated than it is. This is especially useful in music. When I have an idea in my head, it's really difficult to keep going on it for a real long time. And so cranking out the bare bones of the idea as quickly as possible is prime to be able to actually finish the song. These bits fill in just the textural component of the song. I just took an old corporate track and reversed it, and then took out all the low end and synced it to the beat. In fact, the entire intro of this song... Yeah, it's the very end of the track. I just reversed. And this comes down to probably my biggest point that I'd like to make in this video, which could be very obvious. Resample your own work. I like to think of it like fermentation, where you're letting bacteria just continually grow on itself if you're making sauerkraut or sourdough or something like that. Weird analogy, but this is a track called Cadmium. I 
At the time I made it, I was working with this dude, William Light, who just released this synth. It's a really unique Lissajou curve based synth. I was helping him on some of the future interface development of Cadmium, and he sent me a video covering all the features of the synth. So I'm just gonna cover it up, but he was showing me some of the presets in there. This is probably my favorite one that I've come up with. When I listened to that little clip he made, uh, I ended up recording it and then throwing it into Ableton. I sped it up about two times. Because it started as a sample, then speeding it up, I got all those weird delays with it. I was really tempted to go back and get the preset from him and just use the original synth. But this brings me to my final point about the benefits of sampling. It keeps you on your toes. It's destructive. It's messy. I felt more of a drive to milk everything I could out of this sample when I kept it as a sample as opposed to finding the original synth and working with it non-destructively. Once you start flattening things and mixing things down, you don't have anywhere else to go but forward. If there are any tracks that I have made that you'd be interested in seeing me break down, feel free to mention them in the comments. Cheers.